Is it doing the thing? Oh, yep. Quiet on the set. Oh, it's just me. This beautiful 1967 Pontiac GTO has been hiding in a garage since 1982. 40 years, fellers and fellettes. It's a long time. So I'm gonna do the right thing, try to get this running and drive it 800 miles back to Central Florida. You see, I don't own this car, Mr. Johnson does. And Mr. Johnson, he's a husband, father, and Vietnam veteran. Complications with the war left him paralyzed. Thus, this has been sitting in his garage since, just waiting for an opportunity to return to the road. Now I caught wind of this, contacted the son, Chris, and we came up with a plan. He snuck this off the property, got it here to Vice Grip Garage. I'm gonna overhaul this thing bumper to bumper, get it running and driving, make sure it's safe, go through the brake system, the fuel system, bring the paint back to life, the interior, the top, you name it. And then when I drive it back to Florida, we're gonna surprise Mr. Johnson with a car that he hasn't seen since 1982 and bought in 1977. Now, I don't have a lot of time before he recognizes this thing is missing, so we gotta get after it. Part one, let's see if we can get this thing fired back up and running again. Welcome to Vice Grip Garage. So by now you regular viewers know that I'm very fond of this country and our veterans. And I just wanted to reiterate, the Johnson family isn't gonna owe me a single penny for this build. If you try to put on paper what our veterans have done for us, well, you just simply can't. And it's the very least that I can do and my family can do for the Johnson family. This is gonna be a new segment and something I've always wanted to do. And we're gonna call it Vehicles for Veterans. It might just be you know, just a very basic car, get somebody A to B for medical appointments, see family, get groceries, maybe sneak by the VFW. Or in this case, a rig that they've had for a long time that just needs some sprucing up. Mr. Johnson bought this in 1977 after the war for $1,400. Wrap your brain stem around that. Whew. I hope to do it a bunch throughout the year. We'll just have to see what time allows. But I can already tell you, I have a stockpile of vehicles for our veterans that we should be thankful for every single day. First thing that we've got to do here is walk around this rig, drink it up, come up with a list and a plan here because again, I've got a very short timeline before this gets a little bit hairy with, hey, where did that big hump go in my garage with the stuff on it? There used to be a 67 GTO under there. So we've got to move really quick. Now I hope to bring in some friends, some special guests, some experts, and a bunch of people along the way that can really bring this car around and make it something very, very special for Mr. Johnson. So please stay tuned. Anyway, let's take a walk around this thing, see what we got going on. Still have an antenna, that's pretty neat. Hey, I'm here once again to talk to you about AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 is a comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition with 75 vitamins and minerals and whole food source ingredients for just about anyone. As some of you know, I started using this product about a month ago, maybe it was a month and a half ago, not sure, but let me tell you, I can confidently tell you now that I absolutely believe in this product. I have a huge boost of energy in the morning and I don't crash in the afternoon. One scoop of this takes care of my daily nutrition. I no longer have to dig through different bottles of vitamins and all this different stuff. 75 vitamins and minerals right here. This product also helps support a healthy gut and my digestion has definitely been better supported on the road, which I am a lot. If you swing over to athleticgreens.com forward slash vice grip, you can get yourself a handy little kit like this. And in there, of course, you got your AG1 by Athletic Greens and a shaker cup. Super easy to use. And let me tell you what, the taste isn't that bad at all either. I take this right away in the morning, eight to 12 ounces of water. I don't know, something like that. One scoop, that's it. Give this a little shake, ready to go. 
I also recently picked up these convenient travel packs. Guy can carry these on the road and just do the thing whenever I need to. So if you're looking to benefit your energy, digestion, nervous system, performance and recovery, or even support healthy aging, you need to check out AG1 by Athletic Greens. And you can do that by going to Athletic Greens forward slash Vice Grip, or you can click the link down there in the description and that'll shoot you right over there. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring another video. Now let's get back to this GTO. I gotta finish this too. Now, like I was saying, Barry bought this in 1977 for $1,400, a little while after he got back from Vietnam. He was able to enjoy it for a little while, and he actually repainted it once. Kind of this black cherry, it's not the original color. You can kind of see the original color under there. But complications with the war eventually left him disabled, and it sat in his garage, just absolutely buried in miscellaneous stuff. Like, well, a lot of projects do, to be honest. The body is in really good condition. Yeah, it's got scratches here and there and whatnot, but it really does not have a lot of dings, dents. And the biggest thing is there's no major rust that I can see anywhere in this car. And even looking at the top, I don't see any evidence of bubbling or delaminating or any issues like that. Thankfully, this old girl has been stored inside a garage on concrete all these years. So it's a very, very solid candidate to bring her back around. I'm not sure where the tires came from, the BFGs. I think that might've been from the sun. I'm not sure what year they're from either. I could tell you that three of the four are absolutely bad. They're bulging at the sidewalls and well, they're just not good. They're not uh, street worthy, so we're gonna have to replace those at minimum. I did just touch this with a buffer. You're gonna have to stick around for the paint episode for maybe 10, 15 seconds, and boy, she came right back around really, really quick. She is an automatic. Interior is in rather good condition, if I'm being honest. We got a little bit of armrest wear. Pretty typical. Steering wheel has been wrapped, so I'm sure that's kind of gummed up a little bit, you know. And this is from sliding in and out. Sometimes you just plop in a little too hard. She blows the seam on her and then starts to go. It happens. But the slidage, not too bad. Pedals. We got some wear on the very left side, wear on the very right side. Mileage shows 88,000. 654, I'm gonna be honest, I think that's original mileage. I do not think that's been rolled over. Back seat's in really good shape. You know, that could be cleaned up. The tray, well, shade carpet days are gone. Maybe we can bring that back around. Headliner's in really good shape, needs a lens on the light. And there is a mouse hole. Where is it? Oh, right here. Just a tiny one. I just don't think it's worth pulling the glass for that. So we might just try to put a piece of tape over that and ignore it. But again, we're gonna put new carpet in this. We're gonna fix the seat. We're gonna really make this interior just come back around and just try to blow Barry's socks off if possible. Listen to this. Incredible. The car is really, really solid. State of Florida, 1981. That's their uh, inspection certificate. And we'll go back here and look at the plate. Polk County, 1982 of November. So winter of 82 is when this got parked and that's where it sat. What a beautiful car. Man, these, you know, somehow they made the hood and the trunk both longer than a night in jail. How did that happen? I don't know. You compare it to like a Camaro or a Challenger or first generation Mustang, really stubby trunk or deck lid or boot, wherever you're from. And then the front was longer, Pontiac, they got it right. And these are known as probably starting the muscle car generation. And I, I guess I can't blame folks that claim that. Look at this here. Well, let's climb in and look at the shifter here so you really understand the cockpit. Now again, there's a huge group of people that really think that the GTO kind of 
sparked the muscle car era in the mid 60s and really fired up other automakers to be competitive. And I could be persuaded to be part of that group as well, especially if you throw a four speed in this bad boy over here. Mid 60s, late 60s, man, what a time to be alive. The cars were absolutely fantastic. And you can't forget Holden up in the 2000s. I got you, fellers down under. You know what I mean? Now, 74, 73, 74, GTO kind of faded off, went into the Ventura, and that was to kind of be with the Nova and all those other cars, and that was kind of the end of it. But they had a strong, strong run. And late 60s GTOs, man, they were hot, and they're still hot today. Let me show you the interior styling of this thing, and especially the shifter. I mean, they were really, you know, they were dialed in to, can we run light to light? You know what I mean? Let me bring you back in time here. Green Bay Packers defeat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. First human heart-to-heart -heart transplant is completed. Vietnam War is going on, and you slide into this cockpit. And it's one of my favorites. I don't fit very good, but nonetheless, it's still good. I like how flat this is here. You got battery, speedo, gasoline, temperature light, clock. Of course, you can get tack upgrades and whatnot. Lights, wipers, ignition sticks, and then this should be the lighter, I believe. Yeah, that's lighter. Look at this radios. AM and the FMs, fellers. Think about that for a minute. Factory AC, you got ice cubes blowing up in your face. All that's fine and dandy. But the best part is down right here. Okay, you're just cruising around doing the thing. Let me just throw it in drive here. And, uh, oh, got a hill. Yep, we'll bring her down into low, whatever. Rig pulls up next to you, wrapping the pipes. Don't mind if I do, feller. Boop. Guess what? No one had this back then. You want to see some shift reaction. First, second, can't move, she's stuck. Third, can't move, stuck. Neutral, sure, no reverse. That's it, back to drive. This was way, way ahead of its time and really kind of kicked off that aggressive shifting, street racing, all that stuff. Certainly beat the Challenger out of the gate, which I will say has one of the more impressive slam or slap shifters. But boy, this, I mean, we're talking 67 for 70. This was already out. Got to fix this. Got to get some glue or something. This is supposed to go, you know, onto that thing. We got a tack down here, gonna leave that. Got some boom booms, got a Warren G up in there. We'll probably try to clean that up a little bit, but man, what a beautiful car. Nice big wheel, horn buttons. I don't know if they're gonna work or not. We don't got juice on it yet. Door panels are in beautiful shape. Just an absolute, this is what I would call a survivor. Does not take much to bring this thing back around. And I'm so excited to do it for Barry. Let's get under the power barn here, see what we got going on. Well, let's see what we got going on here. This way, and then we should have to, yeah, bring her back this way. There we go. <laughs> yep, that brings her back. Ooh, even getting a smell of Bowster. We got a 400, 400 factory AC. Here's something, I don't know. It should bottle your mind. Maybe it won't. Some of you younger fellers, Lamborghini, McLaren, C14, this, whatever. Stop. Think about this. 1967. That's, just think about this. This here rig came with a 400 small block and she'd run a reported 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds think about that was destroying everything on the street for years and years in fact cars in the 90s still weren't doing a zero to 60 as the gto right here was this thing was blistering fast and thus again kind of started that muscle car era and made it popular this rig looks to be in really good shape i can see it's had a ton of maintenance over the years 
heater hoses have been replaced, fuel lines, radiator hoses, AC lines have been replaced, belts have been replaced. It's got a newer looking battery in it. Voltage regulator has been replaced, which is good news. You know, Barry obviously cared about this thing and I'm sure he went through this whole car 17 different times before he parked her up. But let's dig through here, kind of hook the peepers on her, scandalize it, see what we got going on. Ooh, crispy plastic, great. Well, the engine bay, like I was saying, is really, really complete. I don't see a lick of nothing that's missing. We've got evidence of new rad hoses, heater hoses, AC lines, belts have been replaced. We've got stubbed in fuel lines back here, which tells me the fuel make it happen has been replaced on at some time. Chrome valve covers and air cleaner. Don't forget about that thing. I mean, it's been snoozed up. I think Chris, the son, put a new battery in here. Hasn't been hooked up yet. Uh, he was kind of starting to try to get this thing running again right when we connected. And uh, he put four sparkulators in this side and, you know, left the hard side, I guess, over here, which is fine. I'll get to that. No big deal. Let's see if this is locked up, I guess. 40 years for a vehicle to sit is a long, long time. It doesn't matter the make, model, you name it. Oh, yeah. A little bit of rust, but it's not bad, if I'm going to be honest. And the nice thing is I've got like 49 of those in the shelf. Still running the points in the coil system. We can test that quick and we can throw a dwell meter on that. No big deal. I mean, it is complete, complete. Washer overflows in here. All of it. Nice looking rig. Even the hood insulation which is usually just draping and hanging in your teeth or making your arms itch. She's up. It's still doing the thing up here. So that's good. Let's see what we got for juices. Well, how do you run this? Do not open. Well, I'm trying to open you. Well, open. Do it. Work. On. Start. Well, how do you run this thing? The safe cap. Check coolant with engine cold. I am. I'm trying to. Well, for crying in the mud. What in the devil? Finally got this off. Took a rad cap, get her off her 6,000. Busted it, but it clearly deserved it. I mean, why? What is happening here? No one knows. So, anyway, that is empty, expected. Let's check the Earl out, see what we got going on. Guy might get confused. Where's the dip of stick on this thing? Well, it's hidden. It's way, way down here underneath the compressors. And there it is. Oh, what do we got? Oh, ooh, it's over full by 17 quarts. Give me a minute, processing. No, wait. There's a little bit of water in here. Yeah, we're gonna have to look into that. The rad's empty. I think there might be a little bit of water in the oil. We're definitely, definitely gonna have to drop the oil really quick in the attempt to start this thing. See what we got going on there. But again, the great news is Everything is here and complete, so we could just start working through it. Fuel, sparkulators, compression, you know, noise out the, out the tailpipe back there. Should run. This fuel making happener looks rebuilt. The side of the body looks way too clean and way out of place in comparison to the rest of the engine. Well, here, I'll just show you real quick. Get your peepers in here, scan on it. See what I mean? That looks like a media blasted fuel make it happen or body. And we have evidence that it's been taken apart and down here it's been kinked. So I know this has been off. 
And I would guess that, well, that's been rebuilt, which could save us a ton of time. Original Frigidaire AC pump, that's really cool. Look at this stamp right there. Okay, final test, Pontiac. You'll actually see some of these compressors in Cadillacs. In fact, I have one with the same stamp, exact stamp, but it's in a uh, late 60s, early 70s Cadillac. So they borrowed a lot of parts throughout the years just to make the rigs happen and keep production going. Nice thing also is I don't see a bunch of rat chews and wires eating up and things like that. I've been fighting with that a lot recently, but I don't see any evidence of that right now, which is great. That's going to save us a lot of time. Well, we saw under the power barn here, but I think we go ahead and lift this thing up in our teeth and see what's going on underneath here. Of course, we got to start with just getting this thing running, but I'd also like to know what I'm up against. So going through the entire chassis and drivetrain here is going to help us complete a list of things that we got to, you know, can we, should we, we got to cross things off a list. That's what I'm saying. So I'm told to get this thing done as soon as possible. Yep. Well, do I got no battery? Yeah. There we go. Up we go. Well, I got her up on the lift here. Now that it's in my teeth, we can get underneath and give her a nice thorough inspection. Man, I can't wait to dig into this stainless and this paint. I think we can really, really bring this car around, make it look absolutely brand new, with the exception of the big scratches, of course, but the body looks just completely solid on this. It does look like it has new BF Goodrich Radial Stars on it. New meaning no miles, but they're probably pretty aged. Most of them have these pimples, I think three of them. So we're gonna have to replace those. You can see the beads about ready to come off of that one, actually. Just one of those things, tires sit around and, well, stuff happens. Anywho, let's climb under here. What do we got? We got a power steering leak there. Maybe we can address that. Looks like the radiator's been out, or maybe the transmission. That's pretty common. These get twisted off when they're either pulling this out or dropping the trans. Not quite sure there. Look at this old oil filter. Champ. I also just saw it's had a fuel pump make it happen in here. We got non-original edge hose clampage in there. So it's had a fuel pump put in. Got another new style hose clamp back there transmission pan seems to be leaking a little bit we're going to service this anyway so not a big deal we'll get a new gasket in there that is uh, i don't think that's a cork gasket so that's been upgraded on too at some point we got mufflage probably pretty quiet i don't know should we change that Put some gyps on this thing. This is an older muffler. This one's been replaced. Oh yeah, for sure. Actually, here's the sticker right there on the tailpipe. So, had some exhaust work before it was parked on this side over here. It's got air shock relators in it. I'll be dipped. That's pretty cool. Boy, this thing is clean. Look at the floors in this. Rails look beautiful. All the brake lines and fuel lines look brand new. This is one of the cleanest GTOs I have ever been under. There's not a speck of rust anywhere under this car. Immaculate. Very cool. Well, let's get a list put together. Actually, while I got it up right here, I'm going to take some pliers and disconnect the fuel line on the fuel pump that runs to the tank. I always do that anyway, it's just gonna be easier to do it now. That way when we're cranking this thing over, trying to get it running, we're not sucking foreign material, bad gas, varnish, whatever's in this, into the pump and then up into the fuel, make it happen. Especially since that one looks like it's been rebuilt on. They gotta protect on it. This should only take a second. And then I'm gonna hook a piece of rubber fuel line on there and whip that off to the side. We'll eventually plug in some sort of NASCAR fuel system. By that, I mean, you know, boat tank. 
Works every time. Well, a guy tried to disconnect it, but this is brittle like plastic. I mean, it, it literally just exploded. So we'll have to replace these rubber lines as well. But hey, it's off. That's neat. Got some fuel lines snagged on right here. We'll use that in a minute. But before we start monkeying around here, I went ahead and stuck this big ratchet on the crank pulley. I want to make sure the engine rotates 360 degrees and there's nothing crunching, bending, snapping, or just stuck. Now, this has been in a garage stored indoors, obviously, on concrete. So I'm extremely confident this motor won't be stuck. When they're out in the grass and trees and stuff like that where moisture can creep in them, that's when you got to start worrying. Okay. Oh, a little bit of a crunch there initially. That's pretty common. Just the valve train, the springs. They've all been sitting so long. It is rotating nicely. Good compression there. Missing an exhaust manifold bolt. Or is it broke off? I'll take a look here in a second. Yeah, this is going good. That's great news. Whew, cross that off the list. Well, I got the Lone Wolf 6000 trigger hooked up in there too, so we can crank on it from here. It's missing four manifold bolts. They just, you know, they must have just shooked out of there. I didn't see any snapped off, which is great news. I also went ahead and hooked the peepers right into the freeze plugs, and all of those look absolutely perfect, which is fantastic news. I was getting a little bit worried that the juice was gone. Thought maybe it might have pushed the plug out, but I think we're going to be okay there. So we're cruising right along here. Let's uh, make sure we got voltages to the coil still, and maybe we'll run a meter on that too, just make sure the ignition coil is still good. And we can go right into just cranking on this thing and see if we can get it to bark off, make a little bit of noise. I wonder if this battery is any good. Get my battery tester out, see what we got. Oh yeah, we got sparkles, it's doing something. We're gonna run a fire test here. Throw on the positive cable and then, you know, drink it in. See what we got going on. There's really no evidence of mice or anything on this, so I think we're going to be fine. Blower motor's running. Very weak. This battery might be down. Let me turn that blower off. Now what's it say? Yeah, there we go. I don't hear any sizzling or see any smoke. I think we're good. I think we are good. All right, let's see what the bleep bloop box here tells us. We are on the DCVs. Just gonna make sure we got voltages on the coil here. Should be close to the battery. 12.1, sure. That'll work. Spin this bad boy over to the horseshoe mode. We're gonna test the primary and secondary windings on the coil here. And this has saved me a lot of monkeying around in the past. Troubleshooting and whatnot. Hmm. Boy, that's bouncing around a lot. Yep, we're good. Just took a second to stabilize on it. And then secondary is right down the center there. I gotta spin this up though. We're looking for more juices. 7.76. 7 yeah. That'll work. So, ignition coil's still hot, so we should get some sparkles out of the thing. That's good. Kind of just taking my time here going through all this stuff. 40 years is a long, long time to be sitting. I just want to give it the best shot we can and get this thing to fire off right away instead of cranking on it forever and ever. Got me here some chainsaw fuel. Sounds odd, but actually works really good. It's 95 octane ethanol free. It's about 42.37 to one. So I like to put a little bit of Earl in these, especially when they've been sitting this long, in case they don't start, when you're just washing the rings down. And then, of course, lubricates the top end just a little bit anyway. Gonna try to fill the bowl up here. Get that needle and seat just soaking in again. And who knows, it might just sit here and idle if the idle circuit isn't plugged up, no, it probably won't. 
There we go. Key is hot. Repeat, hot. We're going hot. Yeah, still just me, I guess. Throttle edge, not stuck. I hear the squirter's working. Wow. Okay, that's great news. I'm only gonna give it a little. Okay, that was still way too much. Let's see what happens. Bring the thunder. Sad cables. Pretty sad looking. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have to test sparkles, I believe. I'm gonna give them a little blinky light test around at first. That's the easiest way and work backwards. Chances are, and by chances, I mean 92.6397%, the points are just, they're not pointing. You know, they ain't doing the, they're not opening and closing, most likely. I'm also gonna throw the Beatrice charger on here and just throw that up on boost. An important first step that I missed. <laughs> Dang it. Got the farm and ranch up on boil mode. Ideally, you let this run for three, four days on boost until you can smell the battery down at the house, you know, but we ain't got the times. Got my sparkleizer in here. We'll crank on it again. Should see this light bulb, you know, light in the bulb. And if it doesn't, well, we know the coil's good, so it's gonna be the points. Let's give it a shot. Okay, here we go. Yep, no sparkles. Belden lightning hoses. Them are some old Napa brands, I believe. Snip off the lightning whirler cap here. See if we can take a look at what's going on. A little corrosion there, but it ain't too bad, if I'm being honest. Well, I can't see nothing. There we go. Put this somewhere where I can lose it. Springs are still there. None of that's bound up. Well, to be honest, I've seen worse. It doesn't look that bad. I'm gonna take a piece of 1500 grit sandpaper here work around with those points and contacts, see if we can bring them back around, save a few bucks. But if they're still being cranky, then of course we'll just swap them out, put some new ones in. Well, they were very dirty, got them cleaned up. And usually, not always, but usually, if you can get this to where you're on a cam and rock it back and forth, you can see or hear that contact or point closing and opening. It usually makes a little snap or electro-digital circuit sound. Or if you spin it over, sometimes you can just see those sparks down there. Which we have. Also, are you hearing that? We got a gallop in it. So we got a piston, almost sounds like this side, cylinder, valve-ish. Something is not happy in one of these holes. We're gonna have to see what that is. It's rotating over. Still think it's safe to fire it up, but hopefully that comes out of it. Otherwise, we might have to take a closer look at that. We've got one cylinder definitely making less compression. Should have sparkles now. Keep an eye on my tester doodabby down here. Come over here, long wolf. Got you all mixed up. Might even fire, I don't know. I didn't put any more fuel make it happen air in it, but... There is some just floating in there, so let's see what happens. Wow, there it goes. Horrible valve train noise, but listen, 40 years. Water pump's pumping, can you guys hear that? Yeah, probably not. Okay, I need to stop. Let's, uh, let's think this over for a minute. I'm gonna be honest, right to your face there, fellers. Kinda of startled me, she fired up so quick. Wanted to just pause for a minute and drink it up. Do got some juice in the go forward, go backward shift machine. 
So that's good, don't wanna burn that pump up. And I wanna just double check. There's a little bit of water in here, see if it mixed it up. No. And it has enough viscosity, we can run it for a few minutes anyway. It's nice to get these idling just for two to three minutes, start baking in all the gaskets and seals again. And then we can shut it down, change on the oil, get some nice fresh oil and oil filtrate in there, and then we'll really bring it up to temp, see if the thermostat opens and stuff like that. I gotta go get some water and stuff, start putting that in the rad. Boy, the valve train, it was angry, but that's to be expected. Don't panic. Listen, 40 years, okay? It's, they get, lifters got to pump up and things have to happen, all right? It's got to build some oil pressure. And I'm hoping that's what we can do just by running it for a couple of minutes here. So I'm going to actually get my tank now that I got a fuel line hanging off down here. Maybe we can even strapulate it up. If we're being super optimistic, we might drive this here soon. We'll want that anyway. And then we'll start pulling in some fuel that way, get this thing idling. Okay, what did I just say? I need stuff, don't I? Yeah, that's what it is. No idea what I'm doing here, but as with most things in life fellers, you just, you know, fake it till you make it. And uh, we made it. We got something going on here. We should be able to pour fuel yeah, we can get fuel in there. Got the clicky clacky just in case. Some wires can, you know, short out up here. And then we just bring the fuel line around, plug it lies that in, and we got two and a half gallons of whatever that brown stuff is. Perfect. Sure, that ain't going anywhere. Well, let's try it again. It might start pulling fuel from that tank down there. Sometimes the diaphragms get a little bit crispy in the fuel make it happeners and they don't quite want to suck it late right away, but we'll see what happens in this case. I should have put a filter in there so we could see what's going on. Is it too late to do that? No. Here we go. Bring the thunders. Okay. I'm gonna put a fill tray on here so I can see if the fuel pump is pump of fuel out of the jug. And look things over again once really quick. It's a little different when it's not your rig. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, I think we're all set now. I'll bottle feed this for a little bit. here again. Squirters were working. Those are helpful. I'm trying to keep this thing going. fuel. Sometimes you can pull the fuel line off, put some fuel backwards into the pump, juice up that diaphragm, let her soak for a minute, snip it back on, and then she'll pump it late. I just got to find the right fuel formula here to keep this thing happy. <laughs> It's 
still not pumpulating. She is a thirsty gal, not pumping, not pumping nothing. It might take a minute. I'm gonna fill this back up and we'll keep bottle feeding her. I really wanna try to get this mechanical fuel pump going, pulling from this tank so we don't have to mess around with the clicky clacky and whatnot. Switched up my application device to the fuel feeder 200. Same fuel mixture though. This might help me a little bit over here running on the controls and whatnot. And they're really handy filling up the bowls. Okay, let's give her a go. Hmm. Almost seems like I'm losing spark when we're letting go of the trigger. Still not pump laden. Valve train is sounding much better. I think we can officially say the thing is alive. It sounds pretty dang good. Smoking to be expected. Let's go see what we got coming out of the tail pips. Not a lot happening over here, but look at this side. Goodness gracious. Blowing out a ton of rust. Chunks of stuff. Must be that muffled later. But it's coming around, smoking. The rings will seat up though. They just need to be run for a while. I'm gonna take the fuel line off, back feed some fuel into that mechanical pump. Hope that we can bring that back around and get that pulling fuel from here. That'll make life a lot easier. So guy backed this out, cleaned the thimble up. That looked really nice and clean actually. And now I'm just back feeding some fuel down. We're gonna fill this line completely full. There we go. And we'll just let this set for nine minutes and 42 seconds. And that'll bring that pump later right back around. No, probably not, but it's worth a shot. That's cooked in for a few minutes. Let's give her another go here. See if we can get this pump back to life. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. She might be toes up in the old pasture. You know what I mean? The day, the weeds, whatever flowers maybe you got. I think it's down. 
Well, I did go ahead and order a new pump later. Of course, that's special order, not going to be here till tomorrow. But I'm not going to give up on this old mechanical, and we can even bypass it if we want to. I'm going to rig something up with this little battery here, save on some wiring and switches and whatnot. So on our NASCAR setup here, before a guy had her swung around down into the mechanical pump, which is this line here, now we're bringing it around into the clicky-clacky, and then out of the clicky-clacky, right back into the mechanical pump. And it's either going to make that pump work and bring it around, or we'll just basically push fuel right through it. Either way, this is going to get the fuel we need. Threw some connectors on here. Usually, this sits in like the passenger seat or the floorboard, and I could just twist wires that run to the battery and turn it on and off. And now, I could just throw this down, plug this into here, and that's going to run our pump. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. It's pulling fuel out of the tank and pressurizing. All right, I'm going to turn this off for now. Bring the car down, look for any leaks up top, and we'll see if we can try to get it fired up again. And we'll put this on and off and play around. And I don't know, we're just, we're winging it, okay? That's what we're doing. One thing to take note of here, if we just keep running the digital pump, it's going to most likely bypass everything and just send her right back to the fuel tank. And I do plan on dropping that tank and either flushing it or replacing it. So I don't want to put too much back in there. Well, that pump later definitely ain't, you know, it ain't cooperating. So we went straight to plan J, just fuel injection on this thing. And we'll finally get to see if the needle and seat's gonna hold up. Get this plugged in. You can hear it filling. Is it gonna hold the pressure? Well, I think so. You hear the squirters there? Could be in action now. Now we're cooking with a tire pile. Yeah! Idle circuit's gonna work. Yes, there we go. All right. Valve train, getting there. Well, it's got a miss and smoking a little bit on this side. I thought it kind of seemed like the drinker side initially. Sounds pretty good though, otherwise. The GTO is back. It's alive and doing pretty good. You might've noticed this list up here on the windshield this is kind of stuff that I've already done walking around it a while ago. We might add to it, but you know, get running, done. Full tune-up, we're getting there. Check the brakes, polish the paint, tires and wheels, treat the top, do something with the seats and the armrest, interior detail, look at the lenses in this thing, brake lights, stuff like that, polish the chrome, electrical check, DOT list, meaning we got to make this thing street legal 100%. Rear tray in this has got to go. It needs a carpet kit. Look at the steering wheel. 
weather stripping decals and also I gotta get in the trunk on this. Haven't even opened that. That's usually where I start, but I did not. Well, now that it's running and idling, it's time to get this back up in the air. This dropped the earl on this thing, get some fresh stuff in there. Then we don't feel bad about running it through its paces. I wanna get the RPM up, start blowing the cobwebs out of this thing. We definitely have some sticky rings or something going on on the drinker side of the engine here. And sometimes just some RPM will, you know, bring that around, but you know, it could be a burnt valve, hurt ring. We just, we don't know yet. But first step, oil change. And then we'll add some water in this thing too. Since the guy's down right in here, I went ahead and prepped this for when we put the new mechanical pump in, leaving that in, of course, because we can't run it without it. There'd be oil splish splashing. So new return and feed lines. So that'll be easy when we get to there. Just gonna pop this out, see what we got for Earl's. Usually I get the right wrench, the croissant wrench, but I happen to just luckily grab this one. Fits. Snip this out. Yep. There we go. You know, I get asked a lot. Hey, are you sure it's a good idea? No metal on the Mega Mump. That's great. Hey, you sure it's a good idea to be running these engines with this old oil in it? Well, unless you got some sort of foreign contaminants like water or antifreeze or gas or something like that, viscosity just doesn't disappear overnight. It's going to be there, you know, for a long time, fellas. It's actually good to heat the oil up. There's a lot of sludge and sludge and stuff like that in the places inside of the engines. And if you get it hot, at least one or two cycles, all that stuff is gonna mix up, work out, and get out of the pan. So when you put in fresh oil, you're just not circulating that old junk again. Let's see if I can get this out. Nope, hands don't fit in there. Yeah, too slickery, need a ranch. Guess we're gonna find out if we made oil pressure here in a second. Whoa, this ain't draining properly. I'll tell you that right now. Well, what's going on in here? That oil is hot, and I mean it's full. I'm about ready to spill over. I think it's going a little faster now. Probably not. Anywho, I wanted to swing this over to the oil filter tray because that'll probably want to drop some oil too. Corpus crispy, that's very tilty. Hang in there. Whew. Oh, just got gas in my eyelid. That's fine. You don't need both retinas. Yeah. Yeah, come back in 14 months when this is down. Well, maybe we try it now. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Well, she makes oil pressure, which is great. You never really know. Well, in this case, we do, but. When you're picking up old rigs that have been sitting forever, you know, did they spin a bearing, wrist pin, rod, oil pump go out, clutch? You just never know. I got a mess going here. Do me a favor, fellers. If you got a rig where the audio meter ain't quite accurate or Maybe she's not odioing anymore. Write the date or the mileage or a note or get something on the filter so a guy knows, you know, what's going on with the rig. Especially if you've got quite a few of them like I do and they just get parked up a little bit. You can pull them in and go, oh, I got a note there, an oil pan, on the trans pan, on the rear end, whatever. This one I wrote the date and then first start. 
so I can keep track that this is the first filter I put on after we got her fired back up. Okay, well, let's get her back down, put some dinosaurs on her up front, fire her up again. Yep. Yeah. You're going to be hearing this a lot throughout this build, but not my rig. Got to use the right oil here for the application. So I'm going to do the right thing and put some Shell Rotella T4 heavy-duty diesel oil on this. A lot of people don't realize it's got all the dinosaurs and vitamins you need. 1,200 ppm. Really good for flat tappet cams and things like that. Guy's gonna fill her up with just water for now. In case we got any leaks or anything like that, we can save on the money and it's not such a mess to clean up, you know? Well, I don't hear anything hitting the floor yet, so that's good, I guess. Hopefully this thermostat will open up, head gaskets will come back around. We'll fire it up here in just a minute and let her cook for a little while. That's pretty good. It's bound to have some air in there. Well, let's fire on this thing again. Let her run for a little bit. And my hope is, if the thermostat opens, we can give her the Italian tune-up. Really get some rip-ems into this thing. Gotta blow the cobwebs out every now and then. Yes! That ain't bad. Building oil pressure. There we go. Got no dummy lights on. I'm gonna make sure the charging motor is charging real quick. Oh yeah, 13.4, 13.5, brand new. Oh, this thing's in really good shape actually. Quite a bit of blow by. In fact, let me pull that cap off. See what we're really working on here. Oh yeah, cool stuff. Just put that back on, pretend we didn't see it. It might come around. Lots of oil and stuff's got to cook off of this thing. Years and years and years of it being soaked into the intake and manifolds and you name it. I'm just going to let it sit here and chew for a while. Hopefully the idle will smooth out and stuff like that. And like I say, the thermostat will open. Then we're going to swap and swap and swap and swap and you know, whoop, and tune it up. Getting closer, should be any minute. Here we go. Lots of air. Now uh, she's circulating. All right. As you can hear on the old girl, she's got a pretty rough idle yet. Still smoking out of the drinker side. And it's got an intermittent miss. So. We're going to start the diagnosis by just bringing some RPM around, bend the ear meter out, see what's going on. I'm going to throw some barium and B12 right down the yap. And this should clean up the valves if there's a sticky ring or something like that. Generally, this will whack it right out of the park. And that'll give us an idea where we got to start. I put you back here so you can just listen to the pipes sing.
Yes. Smoking fixed. Literally. So it must have been a sticky ring. We got that taken care of. Still idling a little bit rough, but that is a tangible improvement. Let's see if it restarts nice. Oh yeah. Might need to adjust the timing. Sounds a little bit advanced there on the startup. We could put a light on it here in a little bit. I also need to fix the tack. Gotta have that working. Well, the good news just on it keeps rolling our way, fellers. Boy, this thing sounded great when the four barrels cracked, huh? Hoofta. Holding water. No issues there. Thermostat seems to be working. There's no water in the oil, so that tells us our head gaskets are hanging in there. Looking good, looking good. I just topped off the fuel jug down here with some non-ethanol 93. <laughs> I know, right? Big investment, but it's worth it. Now we could put the timing light on this thing, get that dialed in. I can already hear it's a little bit advanced. And then we'll jump into the fuel make it happener. Start adjusting on that idle circuit just a little bit. Zero issue with, I would say, 32% throttle to wide open. It is there and now. Quadrajunks get a bad rep, but I tell you what, you tune them in right, they're actually one of the best performance carburetors. I said it out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of people just call them quadrajunks because they don't know how to work on them, let's be honest. But I think we can get the idle just brought around a little bit more, and some of that's going to be timing. So. Let's uh, get this fired back up, start tuning. Get on in there. Guy cleaned this up a little bit. Got some yellow marks on here so I could see it a little bit easier. I loaned this out to uh, Freiburger and Finnegan at uh, Sick Week. They were timing that uh, fire turkey, I think it was, or Trans Am. And Freiburger says you select your horsepower back here. I just, I don't. I don't know how to use this thing. Anyway, uh, we'll see what the initial timing is set at right now. And uh, also total timing. And like I say, I have a hunch she's a little bit too far advanced. But we'll see what it says. Just getting ready to fire this up again. Sticker caught my eye. Remanufactured. So I was right. That thing's been rebuilt. And obviously it's working great. So that makes sense. Here we go. Yeah, see. We can fix that. Oof, duh. Yeah, it's, uh, don't have my eyeballs on. 15, 16 degrees. We need to bring that back to like 10. It's really gonna run rough here until we get it tuned up, but there ain't no point in adjusting the fuel make it happener until the timing is where it needs to be. I'm going to say right about there for now. Lock her in. Lock it, lock it up. Lock up the bone. Then Crank this up to about 35. Right on the money. Now we can get into the fuel make it happener. And those adjustments are actually gonna mean something. Boy, pretty sketchy with this fan just swirling on my face. That's right, just ignore it. Relax. Oh, 
Hearing something, something weird here. Still running a little rough, but I think it is a lot better. Oh yeah, there we go. Something weird with the torque converter or something down there. I gotta take a look at that. I don't know if it's loose or what. Also, sparkulators. There's four brand new ones on this side, and I think Chris the son did that, but not the other side. Definitely need to take a look at that. And that could be, you know, a fouled plug or something. Also check for vacuum leaks, intake leak, stuff like that. Just going to get some brake clean, spray around all the gasket bases and stuff like that. And if it revs up out of nowhere, then we know we got something going on. That's not good. Not good at all. Just uh, idled her up there for a little bit to see if that would happen and sure did. Thermostat is wide open, but it is obviously getting very, very hot and very quick. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't put ice cube juice in them right away, you know? Waste of money and gets so darn slippery and slappery. Look at all the rust, material, and debris, and stuff that came out. I guess we're doing a flush. That's what we're doing. Back to the mop again. Well, 37 hours of mopping later, it's back to dirty again, so that's, that's good. So I got real late on a guy. I think we're going to shut her down for tonight. Tomorrow, let's try to get this thing wheeled outside. We'll fill it up with water again, burp it. Hopefully there's just a bunch of air trapped in there. Very, very possible. Bring this thing up to temperature again. Work on the brakes and the transmission and see if we can get this thing driving around the yard. Maybe even take her down the highway. I don't know yet. I don't know. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. Nope. Entirely the evening now. Got the car pushed out early this morning, but then it's been raining off and on all day. Finally got a little bit of a break here. So I wanna to try to jam some more water into the radiator here, see if we can get it fired back up. Get this air burped out of this thing. Hopefully that was just a fluke. Get this thing maintained in some water temperatures. Then we can check the brakes and the shift machine and all that, maybe tootle it around a little bit. At least out here we won't make such a mess. You know what I mean? We can just jam the garden hose into it and feed on it a little bit. Well, let's cold start this bad boy. Oh. 
piece of cake. Got the water running here. And we'll just let her boil over, bubble out that air pocket, and keep jamming some water in it. Hopefully she'll come back around. Been watching the temperature with the Super Laser 9000 to make sure not to get her too hot. You can see this jumping. It's got uh, air bubbles just firing through this thing. So it uh, takes a little bit to heat up idling actually. I gotta hold her up on Ripplums there for a little bit. It is circulating right now, popping some air out. I think we're gonna be just fine. I'm gonna let this circulate a couple few times and then I might go ahead and drop what's in the radiator and refill it because it's pretty nasty looking stuff still a bunch of that rust floating around in there and whatnot also went around shooting on all the sparkulators here and making sure that all these are firing and they seem to be doing just fine still idling just a titch rough we could set the dwell on the points and I also got to do these sparkulators on this side still, but we're getting there. While oh, she is idling and pulled the blood stick, yeah, she's out. So we'll throw a couple quarts in this. We're going to service that eventually, but I want to make sure we have all the gears and stuff here in a minute. And it seems to be doing fine here. It's just kind of hanging out. I'll go rob a cap off of a Buick or something and uh, replace that plastic one that I broke getting off. Well, she's alive, charging, got oil pieces, a few of them anyway, at least I think. No, it does. Pretty sure it does. Staying cool. So before we take off, we got to check on the brakes situation. Been completely avoiding that because <laughs> you know how that works on this channel. So here goes nothing. And pedal to the floor. Okay, boy, I haven't seen this one since fall of 2019. She is locked up. Oh, wow, I'm gonna bend the brake pedal assembly. That master cylinder is absolutely frozen solid. Great, just great. I don't know if I dare press the e-brake because normally they get stuck to the floor oh I was already down a little bit she popped back I'll be dipped yeah I hear it I hear it listen shh listen did you hear that back here we might have e-breakage all right, let me hook the Milwaukee fuel pump back up and then we'll try the gears. Maybe the e-brake will stop us and, you know, scoot to the tavern or something. I don't know. That's good now. Gotta have the window down for fixing on going anywhere. Okay, fire it up. All right, drive, no, no, there is, oh, there we go, e-brake works, okay, this might, this might take some getting used to here, fellas, all right, I just, let me figure it out, we got, Oh yeah. Oh, we got everything we need. <laughs> it goes forward or it goes backwards. And then the other, you know, main brake pedal over here on the left shuts her down. Should be enough for us to just slowly scoot around a little bit. See if all the gears work, stuff like that. Shut the hood. Let's hit the road. It's getting dark anyway. Well, 
Boy, that was a fun cruise. Guy kind of started drifting off mid-evening dreaming, whatever, whatever you call it. Got way too far away from home and then, you know, a light bulb went off. Oh yeah, I got a half-dead Milwaukee battery and a gallon and a half of fuel. So hightail their back, but man, that was a lot of fun. What an awesome car. Yeah, it runs a little rough, but listen, I have not replaced a single part on this car. I filed the points and changed the oil, and we're cruising the thing around after four decades sitting in a garage. That's pretty amazing. I cannot wait to dig into this car further. It is going to look absolutely beautiful when we're done with it. But for now, I think that's going to do it for episode one. But I need your help. Bleep bloop it down there in the comment box what you want to see next. Maybe we change gears and jump right into the interior. Or how about we bring this paint back around? I got something real special in mind for that. Or do we continue on the mechanical? Guy's got to address the fuel system, obviously, and we got to do something with the brakes before we give this back. So you guys let me know, and I'll be watching like a scalded hawk or a one-legged turkey or, I don't know, whatever's got good vision is what I'm saying. Thanks, guys, as always, for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time. Pew. I'm gonna have to snag up one of these, I think. Nope, probably not. Way too expensive. <laughs>